This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Very good evening. Good morning. Thanks all for joining in. Uh, I guess we can start now. Let me just share my screen so you guys can confirm that if you can uh, hear me well and see my screen as well. Okay. You can see it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, my voice is clear and uh, screen is visible, right? Both the things are right. Yep. Correct. Both are yes. right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so let's begin with without and uh, wasting any time. Agenda, you guys uh, pretty much know, I guess, very well. Uh, we will discuss like problems and how these solutions are working. Maybe like some of the tools you guys are already using in. But uh, definitely, I will try to uh, make it more useful for you guys to understand like more scenarios, more features, and how you guys can uh, save more time and utilize these utilities in your day to day work. And definitely, after this session, you guys will be at least like saving more time, whatever you are utilizing today. Great. Okay, so again, welcome you all. Uh, just one request, please keep yourself mute and whenever you require, you can unmute and ask the question or otherwise like put your question in the chat section. I will be more than uh, happy to answer all your queries. And this session will be recorded and I will upload this session on uh, Selectors of YouTube channel. So you guys, uh, you all will get the recording as well. So don't worry about that. First of all, like what's happening in testing. So uh, like, how do you guys get the updates related to software testing? Like what's happening today? Anyone? Uh, from last like two weeks, I'm getting information from testing daily. Perfect. Yes, so some of you might be using testing daily and many of you might be those who are not aware about it. Uh, might be following people on uh, YouTube, Medium, following some of the testing blogs, etc. So you see that, uh, yes, many of you are using the testing daily and through testing daily, you are getting the update. But have you guys ever realized that you can, you are getting all the software related testing updates without putting any effort using testing daily? I, I, I won't say using testing daily because to get the updates, software testing related updates, latest updates, you don't have to use testing daily. You just have to install it in your browser. And now you will wonder how this will be possible that we will be using a tool. You will be utilizing a tool without using it. So let me show you guys. This is testing daily. You just install it in your browser and going forward whenever you will be opening any website like you used to, to open a website first of all what you used to do you open a new tab right like suppose if you have to open amazon twitter linkedin any website you have to open what you will do you will plus, click on this plus icon right uh, you guys can answer and uh, let's make this session more interactive right so we used to click on this and now when you click on this plus icon, that's where you start typing here. Like, let's say I want to open LinkedIn, I will start typing. But you, if you observe that, meanwhile, when you will type here something like LinkedIn.com or whatever website you, are, you want to open, you see that you have seen some of the information, some of the blogs, articles related to testing, like this one, five key steps for SAP testing. You might not have ever heard about this uh, kind of like testing, this kind of framework or any article like official blog post of Postman, Selenium. So that you will see it here. You might get interest. You can read that or else like you can just at least something you want to know. So this will keep you updated with the latest software testing events, blog, YouTube tutorial this way you will get all the information and if you want to open a website you can open a website simple like if i want to open twitter 
I will first click over here and then I will start typing. Meanwhile, I can see that something is happening in testing industry. I can quickly just click on tab, tab, tab here, and I can see that if any uh, event, conference, meetup is coming in, that I will find it here like this selector support cam. Many of you might have got to know from this testing daily itself. Because not all the time, like let's say even if we post it on LinkedIn as well, not our post will show you guys all the times. If you, that post is on top, that might show shows you. But if it goes down, then gone. So this will help you. Like if any new YouTube tutorial comes, that also will come here and it will show you that okay, these YouTube tutorial because these days there are thousands of YouTube YouTubers, influencers, those who are creating the tutorial. But you cannot follow all of them, right? So that you can get here. So basically this without putting any effort from your end, you're getting all the updates. You just have to install it in your browser. This testing daily browser plugin, you can get uh, install it from the selectors of website. Here, this is available for all the browsers, whichever browser you need. So you can install. And then uh, you see here, uh, this is also available as a mobile app. So you can install it on your phone as well. Like you see these days, uh, somebody is not not on mute. Can you guys or uh, can you all go on mute, please? Thank you. So you see that these days we all are keeping ourselves updated with all the things which are happening in social media, like in Bollywood, any movie industry, or anything is happening out there in politics. We are all are updated. How we used to go to like washroom, sitting there for hours, half an hour, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, and keep scrolling Instagram, Twitter, and those kind of social media app. If you just start scrolling for one minute or 30 seconds, this testing daily app, this will help you to be updated in your career, in your profile, what in the industry which you are in and will help you in your career. Like any job related post, anything, any new technology is coming, any new blog article coming from any of the platform that you see here. So this will help you to remain updated in your industry and then you just uh, you can just close it. If you want to read that particular article, you can simply tap particular uh, tab on that particular article. Like let's say you want to read about it, you can click on this. It you, you can click on read article. It will take you to their website. If you are uh, looking for any YouTube uh, video, that you click here and you can watch that YouTube video right here. With and in fact, the good thing is when you are watching it on testing daily, you will not see any ad. So that's another advantage and uh, this will be like in many ways it will be very very helpful and if you don't want to like at any point of time like right now you are attending a session right and you might have seen some of the article here like this could be good for me how to audio testing using test i might want to read this later i can just simply bookmark this and whenever i have time i can check out all my bookmark and just go through them so this is uh, there are many features like you can customize the feed like let's say whichever blog articles you don't want to see, you can just turn off and then feed will not appear. If you just want to, in a quick glance, you just want to see, let's say what all YouTube videos came today from testing. So you can just click on this YouTube here and you see now this is a quick filter and here you can see all the videos here. Same thing you have in the mobile app as well. So here you have, you just click on this, you can see which all videos came. So you will be like really updated with all the things which are happening in the testing industry. If you just want to see the blog, you click here on the blog and then you can have it here. You can change the view as well. If you want to see in the grid view or list view so that you can see. So these are some of the like uh, good features and uh, this is how you can utilize. If you want to search anything in Google, you can search it here. If you want to search anything in uh, Testing daily, you can search it here. Like, let's say you want to search for Selenium blogs, you can just search for Selenium. And then you can see that, like, whichever rooms over people have written related to something Selenium, that you can see it here. So you can see that lots of platform, like from where Testing Daily used to fetch the feed and shows you here. Because you see that these many websites on Medium, there are hundreds of authors we have added. You cannot go and follow all of them. YouTube, there are thousands of YouTube channels, those who are creating uh, videos, tutorials related to software testing. You cannot subscribe to all the channels, you can't follow all of them. So that feed is coming here in Testing Daily and shows you guys. Lambda test, they are creating amazing content for software testers. So that all you get it here. Test Rigor, Cypress, Official Blog of Selenium. Is there anyone who, like, 
hardly like we used to open the official blog of selenium to read that but we all use that so this will help you to keep remain updated uh, is there any question guys uh, related to software uh, like testing daily related to testing daily those who don't have you can just simply scan this qr code it will open play store or app store according to your phone and then you can install uh, testing daily on your phone okay sanjay thank you sure was there anyone who was not using testing daily or was not aware about these features i wasn't aware about this oh great great hope you will find it useful my only request to all the attendees like whatever you learn uh, from this session or whatever tool you get from here for time saver please do share uh, about these in your community in your qa group if you are part of any and also present that in your company as well so it will help them as well because not uh, i'm not able to reach to everyone not everyone is aware about them so this will be really really helpful and all of these are absolutely free whatever i will be showing showing you guys here okay so shall we move on yes uh hello uh, yes please hi uh, hi sanjay uh, one uh, question uh, so in this uh, in the feed right if we search anything uh, can we apply filter like uh, for example uh, you said uh, my feed selenium and it can be mm -hmm. filter like okay in uh, give me the results uh, from the youtube let's say video content only so can we have yes, that yes. is there a yes yes yeah this is here like you okay. see on the right side in the yeah. uh, extension you have this youtube icon and blog icon so if we click on this it will show on the only on the videos same this is there on app as well like in the footer you will see home search if you want to search anything then only youtube only blog does this uh, feed result also give you know uh, kind of github repo as well in the result let's say for example uh, if no. you search anything Okay. If anybody has written the blogs related to software testing in GitHub, and we have added that author, that yes, then it will show here. Like you see that GitHub is also there, but not the GitHub repository code. People used okay. to write the blogs on GitHub that it will show here. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, you can always check from which all platform we are showing the feed customized. So we used to keep adding here the feed. And if you find any, like let's say also just one more thing, these all are whatever I will be showing you guys. These are the community product and most of them are community driven. So if you have any feature request, you want the feed of any particular author or from any platform which you are aware about, do let me know. I will add it here. And you see that initially we were having only these three, four platform. Rest all has been added based on the community feedback, based on you people. Like you guys suggested, okay, we should have the feed from this platform. So that's how we have added it here. So the feedback is really important. And you can raise the ticket here. You see a suggestion. So you guys can add the ticket and we will be more than, I will be more than happy to add them. You can see that like we have closed 50, almost 50 tickets here. Okay, so I guess we are good. We can move on. Yes, you guys can you know if you have any other question, let me just see the chat. Okay, so we all are good. Next thing is selector sub. Okay, so uh, selector sub is basically like um, it's a next gen X path and selectors plugin which helps you guys to write your own XPath CSS selector or any kind of playwright selector. And then it used to also help you to auto generate these selectors, all possible selectors, and it helps in multiple ways. We will see that. Before that, I have a question for you guys. Can, uh, is there anyone who doesn't use any XPath tool? Uh, when, you, uh, when you write XPath in selectors, is there anyone who doesn't use any XPath tool?
uh, all are all of you are using expert tools yes sir no, we are not using expert tools okay so uh, how do you write abhijit yeah we basically from inspect we'll inspect the element and then we'll find expert and then that method we are following in our organization okay so must you must be like let's say if we have to write xpath for this you must be doing it this way yes 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 right and then you write xpath here dev tools yes 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 we'll find the xpath relative xpath perfect okay so here like this is the thing which i really wanted to uh, like let you guys know that when you so see first of all like uh, this is a kind of myth which i wanted to break here that uh, when we say that we don't use any expert tool actually this is a tricky thing which i always used to ask i shouldn't ask that way is a tricky thing when we say we don't use any expert tool this statement is actually wrong we all use this dev tools right to write i'm using we are using this dev tools and here we are writing the xpath so basically we are using a tool to write a xpath this to this is also a tool dev tools is also a developer tool right and this is in fact one of the most used tool out there which is being used by the testers and developer do you guys agree so we all are using xpath tool which is a dev tools now the question right question is which is the correct which tool gives us the correct count of xpath and selectors match that is the thing here we need to understand is it giving the right count of xpath match like here you see that i have written xpath double forward slash input okay suppose on this page we have to find out how many input uh, boxes are there so it is showing 38 is it the right count anyone is it the right count this 38 for only input i think yes yeah okay so now this is the thing which i really wanted to uh, help you guys to understand that this is not the right count 38 we cannot say that this 38 it could be right but it is not 100 percent sure that it is 30 there are 38 input tag in this page region because if you see let me delete this it is saying find by a string selector or x path so when you write here double forward slash input or you write complete xpath if there will be any string match that will also be included here so you see that this is not an input tag this is a p tag but it is showing match why because this is matching as a string so now you guys got this that it doesn't show you the correct count of xpath match you see these all are <laughs> string match not an xpath match this is a very tricky question like earlier people doesn't uh, were not asking these things once i have started uh, like telling and teaching people that's where like people now started asking in interview as well this tricky question what they used to do like they used to write a let me just copy this complete x path like this they used to copy this kind of x path they will write here and it is showing one of two let's say okay and now here it is showing two two matching nodes. Then you interview in interview generally people used to ask, is it correct count? And that's where people stick. Some uh, is stuck. Sometime what they do, like they copy this X path, put it here, and then they what they will do, like they will write a Selenium script, use this X path, and they will show the Selenium script is failing while the X path is working here. Now tell us the reason why in selenium script it is showing element not found while it is showing one of one here and people used to give like random answer that element might not be visible element might be hidden somewhere though this is not an x path match so the uh, the uh, reasoning for this the logic is it used to show you the string match as well so we need to have the platform which gives us the right count of x path and selectors match now let me copy this and paste it here and hit enter so first of all you see that what we got to know that this is a invalid x path while it is showing one of one here so you see that first one thing first thing we got to learn that this is invalid x path 
after uh, add tag name after forward slash so if you are writing a forward slash at the end then that is not correct you have to have to you have to have tag name after forward slash so this is the thing that you will uh, selectors of will help you to learn about that now suppose we don't have the tag name after that so you can delete that and now hit enter it is showing zero element matching so basically there is no no element is matching for this x path on this page so uh, i hope you guys understood the concept that which platform gives you the right count of x path match or css selector match and then which helps you to learn about the x path and selector concept like yes, generally like very much asked question that how many links are there on this page right it is being asked a lot like double forward slash a it is showing 92 are there 92 links on this page no because it is matching this double forward slash a so like for an example let me just open google here double forward slash a it is showing 29 is it are there 29 29 link on this page no it is showing this because of double forward slash a is matching here if you write here double forward slash a you will get to know there are only 25 link on this page 25 anchor tag and which all are they this is here it is showing in selector sum and it will also highlight with this dotted line you can see okay so this is how you get to know about uh, like uh, the right count. Now, apart from this, it also like, let's say somebody is fresher here or very much new about the DOM. Like we used to say DOM and then this tag, that tag, what is possible to automate and all. So that also selectors of will help you to learn about this. You see that I, I have selected this script tag and selectors of at the time, at the same time, it is showing this element is not interactable through Selenium as it is not visible in UI, try any nearby element. So you got to learn about this element that this we cannot automate, we cannot click. Why? Because it is not visible in UI. Like if you select this one. So what is possible, what is not possible, it will help you to learn about those concepts as well. If anything will be like, uh, uh, like, this, like this element, you see that here, if you click on this, this element it will let you know that this is a comment and selectors can't be generated for comment sometimes in interview people what people ask not just in interview in fact like normally if i ask someone those who doesn't have knowledge of dom those who have just joined the industry or learning the automation if you guys doesn't know about the dom if i will ask you to write the x path for this element like if you are new then you will think about it oh can i write it for not is it possible or not so those things start coming in mind and no trainer no expert no uh, leader will be available or not even google can tell you that this is you can write x path for this element or not because there are thousands of element so you just keep clicking will some can someone answer all the que question for all of you like for each and every element no so this will help like selector so will help you you to learn if you want to learn for which element what is possible you just keep selecting and selector so will keep telling you guys what is possible what is not possible okay so basically selector so will help you guys to learn about the dom x path syntax errors css selectors as well now let's say you guys are new and you guys want to learn about more XPath syntax, CSS selector syntax. So how you guys will learn about those concept? So you see that, uh, like let's say we have inspected any element here, okay? And you are you start typing XPath. So generally we teach and learn like double forward slash tag name, then at the rate. Uh, text and at the rate attribute only like those kind of syntax we used to learn so that you will type but if you're using selector sub you will see that you just inspect the element and then you start typing here so like in a smart editor it will start suggesting you this uh, like all the options like what all you can type here like this you see 
as soon as you type open square bracket it will give you all the possible permutation combinations of uh, the attribute and all the methods how many of you know about this dot function contains dot is also there in uh, xpath was everyone aware about this function no i'm new to automation contains oh great so this is like really helpful for you guys then if you are new that you will understand that oh which all types of x path you can write for this particular element and here it is showing the matching counts as well when you are writing your own x path so you see that if you will choose this it will be one matching element so this is really helpful for those who want to learn more about like generally you uh, you guys must have heard uh, sometimes from the senior people that you should not use an xpath plugin or xpath tool you will lose the learning uh, skills of xpath and selector but that's not correct now because selector sub helps you guys to learn about the more permutation combinations of xpath syntax like you see that hardly anybody knows about this function like substring before text this one substring after text like something which before after it starts with normalize space contains text all these functions are very tricky not everybody will tell and teach and you will also not learn because until unless they doesn't come in our day to day practice only we use text function and at the rate attribute so this will help you guys if you are writing css selector like let's say you start writing the css selector it will start suggesting you the css selector function like dollar star cap I'm hundred percent sure most of you doesn't know, don't know about this function. Cap dollar. This is contains, ends with, starts with kind of functions. These are in CSS selector. So this will help you guys to learn these things. Okay. Then uh, if you will be making any mistake as well, this also I really want to show you guys. like let's say you are typing this many times what happens when you write the x path like uh, by your own normalize is spelling like s e n z e it is very confusing so most many a times i have found people they come up, come to me that uh, this x path is not working we are not sure why what is wrong here even though this is correct and now figuring out that this spelling is wrong in normalize space it is really difficult so if you verify this it will help you to learn about this as well like the spelling is wrong hello yeah uh, hi sanjay uh, one uh, sorry to interrupt you one question yeah. so uh, let's say so there are two ways one we write uh, x path css selector by you know by our own by the learning of knowledge and another is by using the plugin uh, my question is like uh, you know normally during the uh, job interviews right they ask like uh, not to use any of the plugin like we have to write uh, every key, every word uh, syntax uh, based on our own without using any the any the plugin either crow path or selector or any plugin so yes yes what do you uh, say on that one yes yes so in that case like uh, see sometimes if you are more confident and uh, you can face your interview then uh, i have found like many people these days those who recommend as well and they explain that why they should use the selectors of like you can always suggest it's not like they say that we shouldn't use that so if you are more confident then we can always give this kind of reasoning that if you are writing and verifying x path here it is giving the string match as well so this is not right platform if you will suggest your interviewer then he might also get more impressed that you know the exact logic rather than just following what he is saying he he will be like really impressed if you will tell him that if i am verifying this here double forward slash a in dev tools it shows me the string match as well so that's the reason i am not verifying here if we use this selector sub we can verify here and you can use it selector sub can be used uh, like i have also prepared a video for selector sub how people can use selector sub in interview so if you turn off these two toggles you see now it is just like a dev tools only just that it will give you the correct match correct count you see that i'm just using it like this dev tools 
there is no suggestion nothing so you can always recommend in interview as well and in fact like many companies uh, ask in job jd as well now that uh, uh, whether you know selectors or not so that is there so you see that uh, here now it is like pretty much dev tools no, no suggestion just that you getting the correct count and uh, if somebody is not uh, getting agreed then of course like we will have to go with this dev tools only it is something like let's say we uh, in reality you know in reality we all write the uh, code in IntelliJ or any smart editor right but when yes, you go in interview they ask you to write the code in uh, on pen and paper right with pen and paper on the like something or, or notepad sometimes they used to ask so so it depends like uh, interviewer to interview if they are good and smart uh, even ai is there so what to say hope that answer your question yeah uh, thank you sanjay yeah sure you're welcome okay okay so uh, like these uh, there are many other features in selector sub so that we will see okay so i hope uh, you guys got the basic logic i'm not sure how many of you were uh, aware and using selectors of this way uh, so yeah now uh, you see that you uh, i'm sure like most of you if those who are using or aware about selectors of you know that you can auto generate selectors you just inspect the element and it generate the x path and selectors all possible x path and selectors and it generate the very good uh, x path and selectors even better than a human written x path and selectors so you can simply copy this x path use it in your code right i'm sure this feature you all are knowing like you can click to copy x path this x path anywhere here okay and then if you want to add it you can click on this and add it and verify this x path here if you want to save this value, you can save as well in selector. So when I always access this value, like let's say if I deleted this, you can always click here and you can find your saved values here. Okay. Okay. So this way you can do that. Now here you copy this X path, but you see that when you write your code, we never write just the x path we always write something like driver dot find element we have to type this right or if you are using a, this kind of locator page then you have to type this command at find by something isn't it like this you will have to type and then here you paste your x path and then add the rate cache lookup so this you have to type complete command are you guys doing this way? Uh, yes. Yep. But what if like I say that you can get this complete command, whatever you are using, irrespective of whether you are working with Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, uh, Selenium, Java, Selenium, Ruby, Python, you can get that complete command from selector sub. You need not to type anything. So you see that there on the right side, set driver command to append on selectors. This feature is there. So now if you click on this, and here you can select any of the uh, like whatever you want to generate like let's say you are using driver dot find element then you can copy this if you are uh, using uh, like your framework is at the rate find by then you can select this and now copy this go back to your selector sub sorry go back to your editor and you see that is the command now you see that the complete command you got at the rate find like whatever it is x path and here you see that enter email the field name is also here so this way you can save more time you can get this command direct command irrespective of what you are using you can customize this command there's a detailed detailed tutorial here and how you can add this command the description is also given here like let's say you are working with cypress you can select this now you see that cypress command if you're working with playwright you can use that playwright command if you're working with selenium python you can select this if you're using this driver dot find element you can use this 
So this way you can, can we, get the complete. Can we also filter? Can we also because because here if you see right, it's Cypress, Selenium, Python, and uh, Playwright. Is there any filter like, for example, if you want to get only the Playwright uh, related uh, syntax? Yes, yes. So you just select this command, and like let's say you now you are getting the Playwright format here. If you close this, next time when you will open, you need not to like select that again. That will be selected, and it will always be generating that Playwright one. Like let's say this one. Okay, you hit enter, and now you inspect any element. And next time when you will close, even if you close this, and next time when you will open, you will get that Playwright thing automatically. You see. Also, you can edit this. Whatever you want, you can edit this command, and that will be saved in Select Reserve. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, uh, so is there any place is, like? Sorry, is there any place yeah. like where you can select? Um, maybe you want to choose um, um, Cyprus. Format. Yeah, you want to choose Cyprus, but you want to choose Selenium. You see the names and just select, and then choose Cyprus, for instance. Yes, yes. Okay, so this down, is the site. Drop down. Yeah, you just click on this and it will show you the drop down. You can select that. Now this is here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, guys. Like I might be going a little faster here because this is a small session. You can, uh, with every feature here, there's a tutorial with selectors. So, like you see that this is a tutorial question mark. So you will get a detailed description about this feature uh any like this is attribute filter so every feature has a tutorial with, along with it so you will not face any challenge uh, and if you face any challenge we are always here on selector sub you have the live chat so you can always reach out so can we also record for example uh, while we you know clicking typing some text or navigating clicking on the link uh, this selector plugin can it also do some kind of recording and show us you know this is the script this is the action we perform something like that uh, yes, yes, I will show you that uh, we have another tool test case should you that will do that does that feature. I will show. You. Yeah. Okay, so we are saving good time here. Uh, like with this feature, we can save a good amount of time. Now, uh, here you see that uh, I'm we are using selector sub here. <clears throat> this way you can do this. Okay. But now suppose we have to copy, uh, we have to generate this much code. Like if I have to write the locator page for all these elements which are shown here, will I will have to waste a lot of time, right? I, I will have to like, I will inspect this element, copy this command, go back to my editor, paste this here, then once again come back, inspect this element, copy this, go back to editor, paste it here again come back here inspect this element copy this paste it here so this is you see that i'm doing again and again going back and forth wasting a lot of time this is not a smart work like an automation test engineer we are so can we generate like your question should be can we generate this complete page in single shot rather than going back and forth so yes we can do this we can copy the complete uh, we can generate the complete locator page just in few click so we can generate this locator page how much time do you guys will take like to generate if you have if we ask you to write this complete locator page it will take good amount of time for you right like for anyone even including me it will take good amount of time right so we we'll see that yeah so now we'll see that how we can generate this complete locator page just in few click. So here you see that click to generate like third icon here on the right side. This is here. Click on this and keep this command thing on. And now you start inspecting the element for which you want to generate the locator page. And if you observe in selector sub, <laughs> You just keep on selecting one by one all the elements and you see locator pages getting ready in selector sub. And here we got this. You can copy this 
complete page and here come hit enter and paste so you see that now we have generated this complete locator page just in few clicks Are you aware about this feature no i don't <laughs> i am using this tool but i don't know this <laughs> Hope you guys will enjoy this now. And uh, yeah, at this point, I really want to show this in pro version as well. Like here, we had to inspect one by one. You see, to if you if we have to generate, but in selectors of pro version, you guys can do this in just single shot as well. Okay, I will show you. Just a second, let me try this. What is a uh, pro version? Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to show this feature in pro version. You just have to turn on this same thing. And here we have this more powerful inspector. Like now you see that just only once you have to select and you start inspecting all the elements and how fast you can generate this locator page you can see. The inspector will not get disappear and within few seconds, uh, like you can generate the complete locator page. So you see that now it is generated. While in depth, uh, the free version, we have to click one by one. Anyways, so we'll stick to this free one. Yeah, thank you. So this is how you can generate the locator page. Now, the next thing is, which is very, very important and helpful. You see that we, if we have to use selector sub, how do you guys use? You right click, click on inspect, open selector sub here. Many of you might not be aware that you can drag and drop selector sub tab some of you might be opening it as a last step so you can drag and drop anywhere okay so this is one feature now you see that here this is like uh, to open selector sub you have to right click click on inspect then dev tools get open then you have to click so there are three four steps to open selector sub if you have know the shortcuts you open first dev tools and then you open selector sub this way and this is three four steps are there to open selectors up here now if you want to use selectors up on let's say linkedin or on any other tab you cannot use again you will have to again open the dev tools right so now we have this feature that you can open selectors up just in single click just clicking on the by uh, clicking on the logo here another great feature is this that when selectors up is open on the side panel you have the access of your website on the left side. You have the access of selector sub. Also, if you switch to any other tab, you will observe that you need not to open the dev tools. You can use selector sub here. So you see selector sub can be now used in any tab. You just use selector sub inspector to inspect any element and generate the X path. If I want to use selector sub on this tab, I can simply go here and use it. If I want to use here, I can use it here as well. So now selector sub has the access of all the tabs. You have the access. You need not to open again and again. So this is that way it is very, very helpful. Uh, are you guys using selector sub here or in dev tools? Or were you guys not aware about this that you can open selector sub just by clicking on the logo as well? Is this like uh, Chrome X? Uh, yeah. Can you guys please repeat the question? Is this like Chrome extension? Uh, the you clicked on top right, correct? Yes, yes. Or, this is selector sub. Selector sub is the Chrome extension only. Okay. So you see, uh, uh, from okay, I haven't showed you guys that how you can install the selector sub. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, whichever tool I will show, I am showing you guys. You can uh, install it from selector sub website. And here, this is selector sub. If you click on this selector sub, so here selector sub open. Here you can find the download link for all the browsers, whichever browser you are using. So let's say on Chrome, click on this. It will open the Chrome store. And you can add to Chrome browser. Like I have already is, I have already added in my browser, so it is showing. And after adding it, you will not see the extension logo here. So you it will be hidden something like this. So you will have to click and then pin it to toolbar. Then you will see the logo here. If you find any difficulty, you can always uh, refer the quick tutorial. I will share the selectors of YouTube channel guys link. So please, please do follow the tutorial once 
so that way you will be getting all the features uh, is, is it fine now yes uh, can we also basically when we run any test yes. any of our automation test right so browser will yes. open in uh, kind of incognito mode so basically all the chrome extension will not be available to use so yes. let's say if you use selector hub for those kind of cases yes. browser is open yes. our test is running browser open and continue from there using selector hub yes 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 so I, I will show you one tutorial so pretty much for every question we already have the youtube tutorial for everything i have created so your question is like when the automation script runs uh, the selectors of or any extension doesn't show in that window because that is kind of incognito so you can uh, do that like you can open that as well there in that as well let me just share the uh, link here so you just please follow this tutorial link and you will get that so a small script you will have to add that for that and uh, and for if you want to open selectors up in incognito mode just right click on the extension logo click on manage extension and here you have to scroll down you will see allow in incognito so you just allow in incognito mode also if you want to use selectors up for local html file then allow access to file urls so it will be working and showing everywhere And uh, another great feature, I'm 100% sure you guys are not aware about. Now you can open selectors up through keyboard shortcut as well. So you see that you right click on this selectors up logo, click on manage extension. And here on the left side, you see keyboard shortcut. So selectors up, it is, uh, if you are using Mac, then it will be by default command shift S. If it is uh, Windows, then control shift S. So if, uh, pressing those command keys if selector sub doesn't open for you so what you have to do come here click on keyboard shortcut click on this edit icon again press whatever key combination you want you just press them all together command shift s let's say and now if you go to any tab and press command shift s it will open selector sub so you can use selector sub this way as well Okay, so uh, okay, so this way you can, uh, we have seen like uh, how you can optimize these selectors of more. Now, we have open selectors of here. Let's say we open this way. <clears throat> so you see that uh, there's a, there are a couple of kind of like complex scenarios like shadow DOM, iframe, SVG. And as soon as we hear the name, these shadow DOM, iframe, we use like, if we are new to automation word or DOM or web automation, we start uh, like getting panic. Oh my God, I don't know how to handle these kind of scenarios. So you don't have to worry now at all. Just like any other simple element, you can automate these complex scenarios as well. And you will not have to struggle like in the DOM to find out whether this is inside shadow DOM or inside iframe. You have this selectors of inspector here. You select this and start hovering on the element. If any element will be having any spatial property, it will show you the tool tip like this. You see, it is immediately letting you know that this is SVG element. If anything will be inside shadow DOM or iframe, it will show you. You see that it is showing you this is this element is inside shadow DOM. So first it will help you to learn about these kind of elements as well as it will save your time. Whether these elements are inside shadow DOM, SVG or any special kind of property they hold. Like this one, this is SVG, this is shadow DOM, this is shadow DOM, this is inside shadow DOM what is possible what is not possible everything it will show you guys anything inside uh, like you see that this is inside cross origin iframe these elements so it is also showing you here that this is inside cross origin iframe so all those things it will show you now let us see one by one 
so how you can uh, handle this svg element so you just have to inspect the svg element and it will show you here as well after inspecting because that tooltip is gone so you don't miss anything so for that reason it will show you that this is svg element and it doesn't support a standard xpath format because if you write double forward slash svg this is wrong so you see that it is telling you that this is invalid xpath invalid svg xpath format so what is the correct format you start typing here double forward slash for this particular element if you are using here one second the suggestion is on so uh, you if you start typing here for any particular element then it will start suggesting you that particular uh, kind of like locator uh, suggestion that will start coming and then if you inspect any other element which is inside shadow dom or iframe that also it will recommend and suggest like let me just close this here <clears throat> i will show you through the dom as well like if we inspect this element so this is how it used to show you here like you can see that this is svg path i mean this is these are the child but it, these are also known as the uh, svg element so basically svg element doesn't support the standard xpath format like for any uh, what is the xpath format double forward slash tag name right so that you cannot write in case of svg element that you have to write uh, with the double forward slash svg like this and also remember guys if you have keep it off then in that case suggestion will not come like i was trying to write it here but that suggestion was not coming right so remember that if suggestion is not coming that means you have kept this auto suggestion off so make sure that you check it here and turn on this auto suggestion okay so then you will get these auto suggestion so here if you are uh, writing for this svg start typing and this is the correct format like double forward slash local name is equal to svg so this is the right format for the svg element now it is showing nine elements matching if you want to make it unique you just put your cursor in the beginning type open parenthesis and it will suggest you index based xpath to make it quickly unique and if you don't want to do it by your own way then always selectors of shows you here the x path which you can use it in your script so this way you handle the svg element then uh, like let's say you want to uh, learn about the shadow dom how you can handle the shadow dom element simply inspect the element it will let you know that this element is inside shadow dom can't be accessed through x path use css selector for it so remember guys the logic that you cannot write xpath you cannot access the shadow dom element for the uh, using the xpath like we cannot use xpath to locate the shadow dom elements okay so remember this you can only use css selector and here is the script like you cannot directly uh, locate this element or using driver dot find element method in selenium you will have to use some extra method some extra logics which selectors of automatically gives you you can simply copy this code and use it in your script to locate this particular element also i have created separate tutorial for shadow dom to explain you guys the complete logic and everything so if you ever come across or you want to learn how to automate these element and how to use this piece of code you just in selectors of youtube channel you search for shadow dom and uh, you will get a lot of any tutorial i have already created different different because there are more more complex like normal shadow dom shadow dom inside iframe so all those you will get it here so just watch them and you will get to know otherwise if you know the basic just simply copy this code and you just have to add the dot click or whatever method you want that you can do so this is how you can handle uh, like this is how you will learn about the shadow dom if you will make any mistake like let's say by mistake you forget that shadow dom works for the like you can use xpath or anything if you start typing here then it will suggest you xpath doesn't support shadow dom so you will it will uh, prevent you from making a mistake okay if element will be inside multiple shadow dom it will let you know that this element is inside two nested shadow dom so i will always recommend you guys that please read this these messages what selectors of so so you will not be making any kind of mistake while handling your automation script while writing the automation script 
as well as you will not be uh, you will be learning about the more and more concept okay so please do read these messages what selectors are showing and what information it is giving now if any element will be inside iframe that also selectors of will show you that this is inside one iframe two iframe or more iframe you just open selectors of inspect you see that as soon as you hover it shows you inspect this here it gives you the iframe x path as well as the selectors for the inspected element now you see that good thing is it is telling you that this is inside iframe it is also giving you the iframe x path so you will not have to uh, struggle to write the iframe x path as well if there are multiple iframe you just inspect it will show you all the iframe x path okay so if there are more iframes it will show you that as well how many iframes what are the x path for those iframes everything it shows like this is inside three iframe imagine if you have to figure out how many iframes are there then it will be very very difficult for you guys because for a second if you forget there is a selector sub you do you guys know that how do you figure out how many iframes are there you will have to all the way like if, if i inspect this particular element you will have to struggle all the way like this first you will see this element then you will scroll up scroll up scroll up you got to know this this is inside iframe okay trust me you will never go and check for the another iframe until your script will not fail and you will not waste one or two hours or somebody is really ex expert is with you now again you will have to scroll up scroll up scroll up scroll up then you got to know there is another iframe and you will have to manually write I x path for all these iframes again you scroll up scroll up scroll up there you got the iframe while in selector sub you just open selector sub you got to know how many iframes are there three iframes what are the x path for iframes these are the x path what is the x path for that element this is the x path simple copy and paste so this is how you can handle these complex scenarios okay and any questions so far like we have been you guys have been silent for so long uh, are you guys with me like getting these things is there any confusion or anything yeah. sanjay so um, no, i was into anything, you know. manual testing and just uh, getting my hands on to automation so um, any suggestions uh, on how to get uh, hands on on xpath and css selector is it the right way or um, do you suggest anything? Yeah, yeah, this is the right way. Just keep on practicing. So, see, I have created this page actually for the practice only for uh, people like you. I have created this page uh, on Selectors of website, XPath practice page. If you are able to write and handle the XPath and selector for all these elements on this page, they might be looking very simple like user email, password, company. These are very simple, looking very simple. But trust me, they are too difficult. Like every element has a spatial scenario attached along with this. You see that you might be thinking that this is just a simple box. Right. If you inspect this, you will get to know that this is something else. Alert input box is disable, enable to enter value. So if you practice for this page and some, if anybody is able to write X path and selectors and automate this page, then trust me, he's a really, really expert. So please do practice on this page. There are sure. a hell lot of scenarios. Scenarios are written here. You can see that which all scenarios are here on this page. You can practice and do the practice. So that way you will learn a lot of things. Like it has the this uh, this kind of like everything you will find. Whatever people ask in interview, whatever you require in industry. Like these kind of alert pop-ups, window pop-ups, every kind of pop-ups is there. Shadow DOM, iframe I have showed you guys this is there like if you want to uh, upload a file how you handle those kind of buttons so everything is there in this page table is there canvas element is there calendar is there so all things are there you can do the practice okay so that the videos also tell what each element does like dom i'm not fully aware of those like dom and svg so i have to see other can automatically help you to learn okay yeah. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Sanjay, one more question. Sorry to yes, please. 
Sure, like, sure, uh, for WordPress web automation, we are used only select of like mm -hmm. for mobile or APM. Can we use select of? It is possible. Uh, no, 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 Abhijit. Currently, select of can be used only for the web application. Okay. Yeah. Like and we mobile. are working on the APM mobile, so it's quite tricky for us to find locators. Like we used to. <laughs> waste our time like two to three hours to uh, find one element locator <laughs> true 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 so i'm working on that hopefully maybe like one day i will get the success but currently okay. uh, uh, <laughs> not possible but yeah you can use it for mobile web if you are using mobile web and you need this lecture for them so like you you should open your website on mobile like this right so here you can use selector some you can inspect and use generate so for mobile web it works but not for currently for mobile app native app okay okay now uh okay let's move on because uh, lots of things so are... sorry to disturb you Sanjay. one quick uh, yes, couple of questions so for svg right you mentioned like we need to tweak uh, the syntax basically we need to start with local name then equal to svg and from that point onwards like uh, we can uh, you know continue with the normal regular syntax right like uh, with the class right, or, right, right. or with yes 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 okay. only the okay. starting okay uh, can you share this uh, link of this uh, practice page yeah yeah so you guys just need this lectures of com and then you will find everything on there so just not to create any kind of confusion for you people i'm just sharing one link selectors of.com you can uh, rest all you will find everything on the website okay is that okay yeah sure thank you yeah, yeah. because there you will find the like all the tools uh, link as well as on the header you will find this okay uh, now uh, do you guys want to take a break or shall we continue are you guys okay? Yes. Mm, I mean, look, like, yes for what? Break or continue? You can continue, continue from here. Continue. 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 Okay. Sure. Okay. Good. What happens like if our UI got changed? So you see that uh, this is a very frequent thing which uh, happened for everyone that our ui uh, of the web page used to keep changing very frequently and whenever there's a ui change happen our script start breaking because of like x locator change for very obvious reason right so in that situation what happens none of us as an automation testers or developer we don't want to copy the x path like this and verify the x path one by one Right? Is there anyone who will like to verify like this one by one that which X path got changed and you have such a big script? Nobody, none of us want to do that uh, and nobody can do that as well. Practically, it's not possible, right? So in this situation, what happens? Our automation script used to go in backlog. And we start whenever there's a UI change happen, we start writing the new script, new test cases and we uh, whatever was the earlier test case before UI change that goes in backlog. Do you guys agree? I'm talking very practical, like what happens in industry. Yeah, debugging is too difficult. You are right. Yes. So to handle that, we have this feature, selectors healing, XPath healing in selectors hub, where you can verify all X path from of your script just in one go. You copy your complete sit uh, complete code like this. You copy complete code. If it is a locator page or anything, copy this. Go to that page. Here you have this X path healing. Open selectors up. Here you have X path healing. Click on this. There is a edit button here. Click to paste all X path. And here you paste your complete script and you click on submit and you see that it has fetched all the xpath from your script and showing you which all xpath are matching and which all xpath got changed so you can simply click on add it and fix this xpath and that's way you can fix your automation script and good thing your script will not go in backlog and you will not be in in a panic situation that ui got changed now all my xpath got changed i will have to rewrite my script from the beginning 
so you see that this way you can verify your complete script and again this will work irrespective of how your framework whether you are working with selenium cypress playwright so you guys don't worry uh, the tutorial is available here for everything like uh, for all kind of things so you will not have to worry about that you just have to click on edit paste your code here and then you will be able to verify all the xpath so this is xpath healing feature which is available in the free version and you guys can verify all the xpath and selectors so uh sanjay sorry if i may ask how do you how do you copy all of the xpath back to your um your yeah. how do you copy them back you have to copy one after the other or is there somewhere you will click and you be able to copy yes. them back or back here yes yes so you see that uh, like not all the x you can copy all the x path by clicking on this like this you can copy okay and uh, paste it in your code otherwise uh, generally it will never uh, be required for you to copy all the x path only the x path which got changed like showing zero matching node here that you just want to copy so you simply add it like right now it is showing zero matching node you will fix this x path and then you can just copy this x path and paste it in your script wherever is that x path Excellent. if you Thank need you. all you copy all the x path then here is a button you copy all the x path and wherever you want you can keep that yeah thank you yeah because there will be never this situation where you want to where you will have to fix all the x path if you have to fix all the x path then better you change uh, like write the new script that is not recommended like if it is suppose you are verifying here like how many 26 if 20 x path got changed then it is better to write a new one right it is good like if 3 4 x path got changed out of like 20 100 x path then it is good practice to uh, fix them if it is like everything got changed the complete ui got changed in that case like it is recommended to write the new script so suppose like this page one new box came in between which means only two three x path will get changed not many so that you can just paste complete script and verify and uh, if you guys want to because here it will verify only x path in free version but what if like you your script has like css selector x path id class name if you want to verify all kinds of selector then you can use the pro version in pro version we have this feature where uh, selector ceiling where it used to fetch all kinds of selectors and it will verify like this one if you paste this complete script you see that it verifies css selector x path and everything so it shows like this so that is there sanjay one question okay. so uh, because normally in playwright it's uh, the elements are located using the css selector so for we cannot use this auto heal feature the, uh, in play right in the free version uh in free version it used to we have just the x path healing not the uh selector ceiling so yes there it will not verify your css selector in pro version okay. it can verify css selector all kinds of selector basically okay okay then uh, we have this feature of verifying the dynamic invisible drop down elements and any kind of like bubble loader as well so you guys must have come across such kind of scenarios like on flip card let's say if you search here for something like this now you see that this is a drop down kind of thing but if i right click on this it used to disappear so we are not able to inspect such kind of drop dynamic drop down which immediately disappear so in this situation what to do so here you have a feature in selector sub debugger feature uh, this one turn on debugger so if you turn on this debugger here in selector sub then it will pause this element like let me just see once uh, just a second this is by default five second here i might have changed it earlier okay so what you have to do to make inspect this drop down element to stop them uh, from disappearing you have to click on this debugger icon and within five seconds you have to make that element visible so you will see that now in five seconds it will pause this element now you go back inspect this element you can inspect this element and here you can uh, see the 
uh, like you you see that now it is not disappearing you can inspect any of the element it is not highlighting because i don't know like this is a dev tools issue but yeah you can inspect any of these element and you can see the dom for that particular under five fifteen thousand. you see that this element we have inspected now uh, so this is how you can use the debugger feature to learn more about in detail for debugger you can yes always refer the tutorial also this kind of bubble loader you see that this uh, there is a bubble loader here it will appear but that is getting disappeared very fast you see this bubble loader and now we are not able to inspect this so i'm sure like many of you might have come across this kind of scenarios of bubble loader so you see that here to inspect such debugger now here uh, the region we cannot by default you cannot turn on debugger for such kind of bubble loader because that is appearing by refreshing the page it will appear when the page is loading okay now after clicking on the debugger you cannot refresh the page if you will refresh the page then debugger will resume like it will get executed so after clicking on the debugger you are not supposed to refresh the page so how we will how we will handle this scenario we will have to turn on the debugger immediately after refreshing the page when page is loading you will have to click on this debugger immediately so what we will do we will change the wait time from 5 second to 0 second here to inspect the bubble loader come back here we will put our cursor on the debugger and now refresh the page immediately click on debugger as soon as you see that bubble loader here okay refresh and i clicked now you see that the bubble loader will not disappear now you can inspect this and you can generate the locator or whatever you want for this particular element so this is how you can inspect such kind of dynamic bubble loader as well okay and once you are done you can just click on this and execute okay so this is how you inspect such dynamic element then x path with respect to other element most of you write the x path with respect to other element like you want to write x path always for this particular element with respect to this so this also you can do it automatically in selector sub you see that there's a x access x path feature click on this inspect first element this with respect to which you want to generate and then inspect this for which you want to generate and here it has generated here let's say you want to generate for enter password with respect to password inspect first this element then inspect other element you got the xpath you can simply copy and use so this is how you can generate the xpath relative to other element as well here you can also have this attribute filter feature as well like uh, it is generating with uh, any particular let's say you don't want to generate with id or without id like you don't want to generate I with id because id could be dynamic like if you inspect any element which is dynamic like here you see that it is showing you alert icon id looks dynamic uncheck the id so if you don't want to generate with id you uncheck this it will generate without that so there's an attribute filter feature so this is a really good feature you guys i will really recommend you guys to watch this then uh, yes another great feature which is more time saver for you you see let's say you guys don't want to open the selector sub so in that case we have this feature you just right click in the context menu you will see that there's a feature like you can copy the selector right from here itself you get copy relative xpath id name so you can copy from here itself yeah but yes uh, disadvantage is you will not be able to see the value like what value you are copying so you would be copying blindly but yeah in pro version you can see the value here itself like what is the value of this what you are going to copy so yeah that feature is there that you can copy from the context menu itself okay so this is selector sub there are many many features actually i can't cover all of them in this session so i will recommend you guys whenever you face any challenge or uh, you have time do watch the more tutorial on selector sub youtube channel about selector sub so you will uh, get to know more about it you guys can get the free access of uh, like uh, selector sub pro version and whatever uh, test case studio pro version as well i'm sure you must have got received the link in the mail invite uh, calendar invite so please do follow otherwise like i will also share the link here so you guys can take that i will share that okay 
now next thing is what is that first thing we as a tester do whenever there is a bug in production try to reproduce the issue uh, yes uh, try to reproduce the issue and the other thing is blaming others that this is not our fault that's this is the practical real thing <laughs> right so so in this situation <laughs> sorry you will report so to the developer team <laughs> yeah so in this situation what happens like uh, whenever there's a uh, bug you guys were very right that uh, first we try to reproduce the issue then uh, for to reproduce the issue or to file the bug we need the steps to reproduce the bug right we need the screenshot these are the like testers daily problem testers need the steps to reproduce the bug they need the screenshot they need the proof of testing that they have done this testing like suppose here suppose we want to uh, buy any product like i will search for iphone then we click here then i uh, let's say i right click on this pricing here then we select buy with exchange then we uh, click on 256 GB doesn't get clicked then I click here and there's an error unable to add to cart please retry in few few minutes now this is a bug actually and we have to report this okay so here can anyone uh, does anyone of you remember like any one of us remember what all steps we have followed to reproduce this bug so if you have to file a bug for this particular feature for this particular bug is anyone who remember all the steps and this can be reproduced only by following all the steps which we have done like where we have right click we have select this we have done this this and that so practically none of us will remember all these steps Agree? No. no we can't yes and then this is how we used to take this screenshot manually and we highlight the field as well where is the bug like by clicking on this there's a bug on this button when we are trying to click on this there's a bug right and then we save this and we share this with our developer and we write like this open this website click here search for this whatever like right click then right click here like this you used to uh, uh, type these steps to reproduce the bug right do you guys agree and then take the screenshot like that correct now what if i say that you guys can get all these steps and this kind of a screenshot automatically without you doing anything extra that will save a lot of time for you guys you see here this is the test case studio i have already turned on this i started before doing the uh, testing on flipkart website here we have all these steps recorded automatically i can simply copy them paste it to my developer that these are the steps to reproduce this issue and this is the screenshot here you can see that click on going to cart and i clicked here and this you see that the field is also highlighted and the complete screenshot is there i can simply right click copy image or save image and share it with the developer so this is how you get all the steps and screenshot automatically to file the bug. Can I Isn't ask? It? Yes, I have a question. Should it, for instance, this is amazing to be honest. Well, if in the case of maybe there was a step that was missed, is there any possibility of adding your own step? Maybe yes, yes, yes. Everything, everything is. So let's say you want to add a step in between you can click yes, on this plus correct. icon and add add a step here if you have recorded any step by mistake because there will be a chance that you have recorded uh, some steps by mistake and also because it also record the scroll and uh, everything okay. like you have a scrolled up a scroll down so if you want to delete those steps before sharing it with your developer you can always delete those because like let's say press shift key scroll up and all those things it has recorded you can delete them okay you can add Easy. there are lots of now suppose this is not a bug 
like you were doing the testing this was not a bug and you want to save this as a test uh, proof of testing that you have covered this scenario then you can simply download this and you see that whenever there's a bug in production nobody will blame you that you uh, haven't done this testing because you have this proof of testing with you and you can always show them that you have done this testing see i have the screenshots and all the screenshots will be there with the name of the screenshot as a step so so that will be there and you will not be having any kind of challenge like uh, so everything will be there <clears throat> and here you have the x path and css selector as well so if you want to automate this scenario you can use these directly you need not to again go back to browser you get the data can we data as well. can we re can we replace this step as well let's say we recorded right and let's say we also want to first uh, ensure like the steps what is recorded is correct to reproduce the issue can we replace this whole uh, script steps uh, okay so this is not a record and play right now it is only it can only convert your uh, accents into plain uh, english sentence or in any language which you want so it just record the sentence it cannot replay Because let's say you if we share these steps with, uh, let's say if we share these steps with developer and they say they are not able to reproduce, then uh, my question is, if first like from our end itself, if we mm -hmm. you know try to run all this step and see, okay, we first we are able to reproduce or not, because that is a common uh, problem if right? developer say we are no. not able to reproduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that case, that is something like because there could be a chance if they are not able to reproduce the issue, that means that issue is not persisting there now. But when you have done the testing, so this is a basically actually a proof that you have when you were doing the testing, there's a screenshot and there was issue. Also, to make it more proof uh, like thing, you can also do the record screen. You can record the screen as well. So here you can turn on the recording. You select whichever tab you want or you want to record entire screen. You select this and you see that now the screen is recording. So they cannot say that there was not issue. There was an issue, but now when you are trying to do that, there could be a chance that issue is not happening now. So in this case, you see that here, another good advantage here, like if I stop the recording, it also gives you the timestamp that at what particular time you were doing this. So they can go and check back in their logs that at that particular time why this issue was happening because for sure like at that like when he is trying to do a uh, reproduce issue there could be a chance that issue is not reproducing so here you have the timestamp as well as when you will be doing the testing it will also record these information which a developer always ask like what was the browser on which you were doing what was the browser version you were doing the testing what was the os and os version on which you were doing the testing so everything is being recorded here so when you will download this, it will have all this information or you can simply copy this, paste it to your developer that these are the system information where I was doing the testing. And this was the time when this issue has happened. Is there any uh, length of uh, recording the steps what you perform? Like any uh, limit? There is, no, uh, per, uh, there is no limit on the free version. But yes, after 50 steps, because there will be like too many screenshots, you might feel a performance issue but in pro version you can like uh, unlimited lots of things you can do uh, so yeah and can we download this uh, recording thing in yes, yes you, can download, uh, yeah, you can download the screen recording you can download the test case screenshot everything you can do also you can record the test cases in any other language as well like let's say you you are doing testing in your local language like french germany or Kannada, Hindi, any language you are recording, uh, doing the testing, that also you can do. You can go to customize. Here you can change these sentences and then you will be able to uh, do that. Like, let me just quickly show you guys how you can do that. Like, suppose there's a website which is in your local language, okay? And which happen a lot. Like, we always do a lot of testing in local language. So here you select your language. Let's say this website is in, like, this language in hindi language okay now i want to record the sentence in this language itself because you see that if we record these sentences by default we are sorry we are clicking here and there like this 
so you see that some are getting recorded in different like uh, there are two languages right now this is english and then this is hindi like local language okay but we want everything being recorded in this particular language so the uh, test cases will look more better and clear so you can do that here what you need to do open test case studio click on this customize here you see that whatever keywords are there like whichever is there outside uh, these double quotes you copy that open google translator english to uh, like translate from this english to your local your language click copy this and this is one time effort like if you have to do that then like you can change all these sentences and this is one time only after that you will not have to do it again and again it will be saved in your local system now i'm just doing this with these two only you can do if you want for all and then go back delete all and now if you will do the testing here you will notice that everything will be recorded in that language you see that these sentences so now it is in that particular language only so this is how you can do that and if you whenever you want to go back to the default click on the uh, reset button and it will do that also even in english also it is saying click on you want to say click it you can change this open website you might be saying open url so this you can do now if you go back delete so if you will be like whatever you will be doing it will be recording in that language open url click at so this is how it do okay any any question on this so far there are many many um, more features sanjay i have one question yes please okay um actually i am uh, using this tool uh, from past uh, five months i'm and it's amazing and uh, i'm uh, saving a lot of time to create steps and all i have one query like um i have i'm getting the screenshots is it possible to get all the screenshots in a document like word document can we save those or is there any way to save only the screenshots in the documents i am getting in the image uh, we need to copy paste yes. those but is there any yes. uh, thing we can select all the screenshots in the world uh, yes no it is uh, we don't have that feature but we are working on that soon i guess you will get that feature you have it in word document as well oh okay okay yeah. thank you right. so much and it's yeah. it's it's a okay please go ahead. please go ahead. yeah uh, yeah uh, because i am using these features and i am implementing the same with, uh, with my framework only i am missing with our uh, client expectation is in the word document so i am just missing those features from this test case studio that's why i am asking sure 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 we will mostly we will have it soon but yeah in pro version mm -hmm. we have like lots of more feature which might help to uh, like in pro version you can select any particular screenshot and then you can download also uh, mm -hmm. like there you can record multiple test cases you can uh, rename these headers as well because none of you are using the similar kind of test case template what selectors what test case studio has you can add more columns you can rearrange the column of the order edit name like you can completely customize the template as per your uh, company you can also directly yeah. like let's say you have this test case we have recorded and this is uh, let's say you found a bug and you want to file a create a jira bug you can simply upload this test case uh, this you can directly create a mm. jira issue bug right from here you can simply click on upload with a screenshot without a screenshot let's say with a screenshot you can simply do here and the mm -hmm. it will create a bug in jira you see that it got directly uploaded there if you are using test rail that also we have the integration on test rail there in free uh, in okay. pro version you need not to do the language change manually you can directly do it select and it will change everything and so lots of features are there in pro version you can add a row before after the screen recording is also better like here you can record the screen with your audio if you want to do that screen recording you see that here you have the option to enable audio as well 
multiple format you can download the test case so here you have excel csv pdf doc you also uh, record multiple test case and whenever wherever you left the last recording you can resume your recording from that particular step as well like let's say uh, i was doing uh, this test case for this particular website then i jumped into another one but again i want to go back to that one so i can resume recording from here itself so lots of things are there which you can do it in pro version but anyways uh, we are discussing the free so we'll stick to that okay any question on this uh, test case studio uh, that feature we will add soon like for the document thing hello thank you sure okay so that was the test case studio you can record in any language now one more thing i want to really want to show you guys which is very very time saver how do you do you guys generate the test data like let's say you have to test this login functionality and you need the user email password company name mobile number like thousands of mobile number in email id password combination you need how do you guys do generate that data um, like a library there is there is a website called bokaro mm -hmm. i use that okay yes and many of you might be using the faker libraries as well writing the code and all so let me show you guys something really uh, interesting and uh, absolutely free auto test data there is a single one web page application which is absolutely designed from considering the requirement of our testers where you can generate the data just in few clicks in three clicks only basically so here you see that it has uh, customization according to our automation testers and manual testers basically so you see that you let's say you need the name full name phone number email whatever it is you need you can select that keep it you can choose a format here whatever format you need and how many rows you want click on generate and it has generated the data now let's say you want to generate the phone number for your country and the country code is plus nine you can add it that you need the full name in place of full name you just need the first name you can select this suppose you need the last name as well you duplicate this row select the last name now here phone number you want email id you want with your company domain you can add the company domain name here you don't want currency you can delete that you want a number range you can set a number range from where to where you want if you want to add any other field like let's say you want to add country you can add country if you want anything else like let's say you want the uh, postal zip code you can add that here and suppose you are generating a property file for cucumber framework you select this separated by pipe you can set the number of rows how many rows you want you want 50 rows you can select this click on generate and the data is generated you can simply copy this or download this file so this is how you can generate the data just in few clicks as per your requirement like let's say number range you want between 100 to 500 that you can do it here so this way you can generate the data whatever data whatever format html csv excel whatever you need that you can generate you can see more than 28000 testers already using used it can we define the so, length for example for any field it should be of this the test data generated should be let's say uh, yes, you can do that. Number, like, let's say you want to generate, yeah, yeah. Let's say you want to generate a text field of uh, how much length you can set the length. Like, let's say ten. You can do that. If you want to generate alphanumeric value, you can select alphanumeric. Add how much length you want, twenty. That you can do it here. So yes. Also, it can be let's say prefix with anything. Let's say for example, zero uh, x and alphanumeric of uh, twenty character. Something like that. Uh, sorry. So, for example, prefix. my test data, yeah, prefix, let's hmm. say uh, zero x, and the length is twenty character. Okay, okay. Yep. Currently, it doesn't have that feature. Maybe we will see that if that will be possible and required. Good. Then yes, we will add that as well. Okay. So, this was the auto test data, guys and okay yeah these are some of the logos logos of the companies where selectors up and all these tools are being used 
so if you ever found like any of the company is not using or somebody is saying that this is not being used in banks and also everywhere it is being used you just have to if it is blocked like extensions are blocked in your company you just have to tell them that uh, uh, i mean for every tool we have to uh, prove and give the proper reasoning for any tool use cases to our company that approve these tools so same for selector sub tools and uh, yeah with that thank you so much everyone for joining in if you guys have any question feel free to ask me and you guys can connect with me here you can scan and uh, yeah let me also share the uh, blog links which i was saying that if you guys want to uh, get the free access of the course or the pro versions of our tools that you can get it here and all the links and everything you will download links and everything you will get it from the selector sub website so please uh, get it from there and uh, i will upload the rec this recording on the uh, selectors of youtube channel so also let me share the youtube channel link so you guys can get it from there and once again thank you so much guys for joining in thank you sir thank you sanjay it was really thank a nice sanjay session for sharing the great for knowledge to us thank you thank you uh, one one last thing in case we need any help right uh, how we can contact you any help or support uh, you guys can always reach out on selectors of live chat or we do have those uh, telegram group as well and on selectors of website we have this uh, contact us page so you guys can always check out that support at selectors of.com you can write to us thank you thank you for the session sanjay it's really helpful and a lot of things uh, learned today thank you for the yeah. session thank you yeah. thank you sanjay thank you thank, thank you so you. much have a great week guys ahead thank you thank same you. to you thank you sanjay thank you it's great thank you guys so sanjay if i have to just be